do this so number one what do we have here supreme spring summer 20 preview this dropped a while back ago i think because the is it the online release is happening to today or tomorrow right i think online i'm pretty sure but you know the deal supreme put out their preview the other week usually the preview is followed by the lookbook and then you get the dates of when stuff is going to drop so everyone knows when they're going to get their stuff and whatever it may be i think if, if we go to the news it will probably tell us here right away um spring summer 20 2020 our spring summer collection will be available from february 20th at our new york la sf london and paris stores and february 22nd in japan our online sales will reopen our online sort of shop will reopen on february the 27th of tomorrow and the us and eu and on 29th in japan so you know if you if you're waiting for your supreme fix you know when to get it um so a preview drops and per as per i think it's the common assumption that the spring summer is a bit shit most supreme fans tend to prefer the full winter and that isn't because of it's not their fault it's mostly because Supreme is catered towards a male audience, right? Male audience between the ages of like 13 and 25, I'd say. And those guys tend to, most dudes especially anyway, it doesn't even those young kids tend to prefer coats and jackets. And how many dudes or guys you know who are into fashion who own like, you know, 115 coats, but, you know, only two pairs of trousers? Quite a lot of them, isn't it? I used to be one of those kind of guys. Outerwear was probably my favorite piece of my wardrobe because I think maybe as a dude, I know you speak for myself. I think we are. I think that's why. I think that's why people have such a visceral hatred when they see fashiony, dressed up guys. Because intrinsically, I think dudes don't do fashion well. I think we do style well. I don't think we do fashion well. And I mean, like fashion is a capital F. Like a, like a, like this woman. What's her name? Susie Bob Bubble, right? Susie Bubble. Is this Susie Bubble? Susie Buble. Susie Bubble. Let's see if it's the right person I'm thinking about. Susie Bubble, Susie Bubble. Yeah, this is the one. This woman called Suzanne Lau. She's like a blo- she's a is a British journalist and a blogger. She's like a fashion blogger, right? Essentially, she wears like you know crazy fashion blogger street style stuff that you know you should all well know and love, right? So, this lady here, I don't think there's a male version of this. Like, it doesn't exist, right? This sort of like frolly like patterns everywhere, pattern clashing, layers upon layers, jewelry uh ornaments all this sort of like weird kitschy stuff it's not something that dudes do for the most part we just do style really well so i think if you're a guy and you have a brand like supreme and they make really good outerwear pieces that tend to cover the majority of your body it kind of is a bit of a cheat right in terms of style because it's very difficult to I've, although i've seen it done it's very very difficult to make supreme or any most mostly male street wear kind of brand look bad if they if they've got their outerwear on lock and they do the good job with the outerwear it's very it's very it's very um hard to get those outfits wrong so i think when it comes to spring summer for most guys i think it's a bit more of a challenge about making that thing work right and again some of the stuff is still it's still really good i think some of the button-ups they do the t-shirts the long sleeves, the hats and stuff for summer are excellent. Some of them, especially the shorts, look to get that up there. Especially the shorts, shorts are flipping sick. But I think if it, it's probably more of a challenge to wear in general for most guys. I think people tend to like stealth it, but I quite like it. So this is their spring summer 2020 preview. Um, I quite like looking at it just via the squares and seeing what's on there. There's a few pieces on it that I actually like. So let's go through a few of them and just comment on the things that I like and don't like again. Um, it, you know, you probably won't catch me wearing a lot of stuff with the logos on it because I'm just not that age anymore. But objectively speaking, you know, this sort of like, what is this? Uh, faux fur varsity jacket, I think is a really cool flip on the conventional varsity jacket. I think here at the bottom, they don't have, a, it's not an elastic waistband either. So that's pretty cool. It's completely made out of this fur, faux fur upper, whatever that is. Um, and then you've got the nice little, you know, chain on here, hook on the inside too. That looks really cool. So again, it's not my not my style, not something I would wear nowadays, but I can see why that would be appealing. I'm interested to know why they decided to go for the what's the deal with the script to the front instead of it being on the back. I guess maybe it's just a branding thing, right? You want because everyone's. I wonder what that is. What that decision was made, or is that just a reference piece or something from the archive? Like why there's because there's a lot of it recently I've seen in past seasons where they they've just instead of having the the logo on the art, you don't really see, there's not a lot of sleeve stuff anymore. Or little details on the wrist. It's all just like always plastered in front of the chest. Always. 
It reminds me of that era when Bape decided to like always put stuff right, right bang in the middle. Maybe it's a conscious decision to kind of boost the brand's uh, signal and coverage in kind of your know, media or in society in general. But I think people, everyone's mostly aware of what Supreme does and who they are, really. You know, so it's not like they need any extra publicity. But yeah, it, it's a fairly interesting piece. I'd, I'd be down to rock something like that if I was that way inclined. Um, this is a really cool one. I, I've liked a lot. Um, I don't know who the art, who's the artwork by on the actual jacket. So it's a Gore Tex Anorak waterproof beer ball Gore Tex two poly layer uh, shell with a embossed logo lining, zip hand pockets that lower front with zip chest pockets, Velcro tab adjustments at the cuffs and a D ring tab on the chest. So it it would remind me of some sort of like old Futura thing or Ramble Lizzy or maybe even like a stash bit of artwork it doesn't say with the artist is so i'm assuming something in-house is maybe something they licensed i'm not too sure well if it was licensed they would have said that they would have gave someone credit but i like it man Imagine the 90s era of street style from japan and stuff you know an anorak half zip sort of thing you can kind of pop over gore-tex so you know it'll stop the wind make you run faster as well that helps <laughs> um but yeah i think this might be one of my favorite pieces out of all those especially the color the, the red that's banging it looks really really fucking good I'd be all over that. Obviously, in, in the solid colors, you could just probably keep it. Not really that interested in it, but I think the pattern, the spray pattern, looks banging. That's really one of my standouts in that so far. Then you have this. What is this? A faux suede patchwork hoodie. I can definitely pass on that one. So let's move. Um, the shirts are always great. You got a painted logo shirt. They always they fit pretty well too. I think I had a couple that I sold, like Oxford's actually back in the day and they were really really good i think they were modeled on like brooks brothers cuts of oxford and stuff so they usually have a really good uh boxy slim boxy but slim sort of fit and um yeah again if you wanna if you're the kind of person that can't you know can't see yourself wearing any other shirt apart from the supreme is and but you want to get you know level up your style and get a bit mature quote unquote you know you 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 know you won't, you're not going to find a bad shirt in these ones from Supreme either. They're a bit overpriced maybe for what they are. But again, it's either you buy this or you buy like something from Uniqlo in it. And this is probably a bit, a bit special. So it makes complete sense. Um, loads of cool button-ups as per usual from them. Oxford, you've got flannels, of course. Oh, you've got one with Daniel Johnson um, uh, artwork as well. So RIP him. That's really nice. Um, you've got this. Uh, oh, okay, nice. They've got like a is it a calf? I don't know what you call it. Calf can? Was that a toggle shirt? I'm not sure. Is that a calf can? It's not a, not a calf can. What is that? With the with it's not with the collarless shirt. The jacket sort of work thing. I quite like the print on this as well. This is quite nice. Oxford denim with like the white on it stitched. And yeah, some decent plaids in there. So shirts, you know. Again, I think most of those shirts will probably. Be a bit more stronger in the winter you have the plaid and the quilted lining you have maybe the zip the zip closure in it so i can see how people prefer winter over spring summer to be honest but still you got this nice jacket here too this is a supreme and banson's uh leathers leathers letter jacket so i'm assuming it's like a motorcycle jacket and it's really stiff the arms are already bent as well so i'm assuming there's some padding or reinforcement there on the hit on the elbows as well so this will probably go for a pretty penny. I'm assuming somewhere in the thousands, maybe that'll be retail like, retailing at probably. But that's really cool jacket. Well, and then I think I mentioned this previously, but I think um I think we might see a time maybe in a couple of years, maybe even sooner, um where Supreme completely stops. No, not stops, but they don't do as many North Face collaborations. Um, because they're doing a lot of these like puffy jackets in house. I remember that was the main thing I remember taking away as a little nugget from a. It's a kind of a streetwear principle, though, and it? it's kind of one the one on one tips or one on one codes that uh, cheat codes people would usually do in streetwear, where it's like if you can't make the particular thing that you want to make, you just collaborate or you go out and buy like you know. I think back in the day it was even different than that. Maybe it's a bit more DIY. You'd go and buy, let's say, some Tommy Hilfiger jackets, right? Even though you can't make a collaboration with them. You'd go buy some thing that has been discontinued. You'd make some edits of yourself. You maybe paint a sleeve, add a few badges, change the zips. You know, you do something to make it your own, and then you just kind of resell it to your customers. Um, because obviously they'd want to be associated with that because they love your brand, they love the kind of you know DIY aspect of it. 
or the other side of it, you do an official collaboration. So it's pretty the reason why they did North Face Fingers because they wanted to make their own winter jackets, but they didn't have the the means or maybe the capability to do so. So they went and went directly to the best people in the industry in North North Face and kind of got them to uh supply their manufacturing their production on that side of things and then you can come with their ideas but now if you've seen in the last few years they've kind of ramped up the puffy jackets in, that they're making in-house so it kind of makes me think that after a while there might be a time when they just you know leave it and then again i don't know whether it's a contract thing because you know they might have signed a, an exclusive contract with face that is like you know binding for life or whatever or just got you know an extended period of time on it but if that contract renewal does come up come up again or they have to renegotiate. I could see them pulling away and just thinking, you know what? Let's just keep it in house, and then we won't sign an exclusivity deal. But what ends up happening is that they will end up having the opportunity to like do a collaboration with Kanda Goose, do something with Arterix, do something with North. You know what I mean? I think that'd be it because I think at the moment now there probably is a bit of a com- non-competitive clause or something, right? So they can't do something with other brands that do an outerwear or whatever industry. So that might probably stop them from doing that. So you never know, man. But that's just an assumption I'm prone out there. I'm not sure if this is true. Look, I don't have any inside information, as you can tell by the nature of my ramble. But yeah, I could see it happening in the near future. But yeah, I quite like this. I like, I obviously, the combination of you know safety orange and bright blue is just always going to win for me. So that's a quality, quality piece there. Again, just not a fan of the whole you know like screaming what you're wearing with the thing on the on the collar. It's just too much. I'd have to wear it on the other side with the blue. But yeah, I like the color combinations. Again, I think they're very underrated in this, isn't it? The selection of colors and combinations and when not to have a contrast stitch, when to have a contrast stitch, what kind of pull tabs they use in the zips. They're all very, very considered. And again, for someone that's been... Because they're essentially printing money now, isn't it? They don't need to go to this extent to like make products. They could just like phone it in. And the fact that they do the extra things still is really a testament to kind of how dope of a team they are and there's a company in it really they don't need to go to that level of detail they could just do whatever and people would still queue up for it but they always always are still appealing to someone like me who you know has been a fan for them for a decade plus you know what i mean and if you're wearing something before it was kind of you know popular and cool and i can still kind of geek out on this stuff and think it's amazing so imagine the kids coming over there for the first time they must be over the moon let's just jump off this and probably just go straight to the lookbook and see some other interesting looks on the other things and then we can move on we won't be this forever but yeah some great stuff from them as per usual um i'm a big fan of all of it i like that kind of whatever is that a cow print i'm sure that a truck and coat that's really nice um i'm a fan of it all i think again some of their some of these sort of like shell jackets they make are ridiculously underrated people don't give them enough props for how they do those things um and yeah interesting to see what again i think with most of the stuff the annoying thing is that the stuff that i like people won't like but then because it's such a level it is now everything sells out anyway it all gets resold and in the moment someone on the asap nast rocky one of those guys wears one of the pieces that i tend to like it's gone sold out it doubles in value so that's the annoying part but the good thing is that the options to get your stuff you know are plenty there's many stores now there's proxy services people on instagram offer place you know offer you the opportunity to pay them some money they go pick up for you in the store you can buy it second hand you can buy it on reselling sites you can buy them on ebay so there's ways to get into the brand if you want to so and, and again I'm, I'm, I'm always a big believer i think people moan too much about oh the resellers are buying everything but i think if you actually want something you can get it and i mean even if you're willing to pay the, even if you're not willing to pay the money if you really want it you can get it there isn't nothing legitimately stopping you so i mean it just requires a bit more effort but you know if you want to if you want to wear something that's cool and you want to get compliments from strangers in the street you should be you should maybe make a bit of effort into acquiring that item but yeah it's all well and good i love all of it mostly um again not strong as some of the winter stuff but you know you can't tell me jackets like this aren't banging and don't go crazy because they do so yeah loads of great stuff tracksuits and all that sort of good stuff that you can find from one of your favorite brands in the market isn't it so let's get off that one let's move on 